What is up guys? I'm the Senator and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use Nomad. Now this video is part of a video series where I take Rainbow Six Siege operators and I try to break them down as simple as possible so newer players or players who are brand new to playing these specific operators can have a grasp on how to use them effectively. And I'm trying to make these videos as simple as possible because if you're a new player coming into this game in year five, there's a lot for you to get a hold of, a lot for you to learn. There's so many operators, there's a huge skill gap. So it can be really intimidating. So hopefully this video will make it easier on you. This video is also designed for people who are just looking to get better at a specific operator and may have been playing Siege for maybe a year now or even less and don't really know how to use a certain operator. So hopefully I'll be able to help you if you're that person. But anyways, enough of the intro, let's get right into it. So like all of these videos, before we dive too deep into it, we need to look at what is the operator's purpose. So what is the purpose of Nomad? Well, Nomad's main purpose is flank denial. And Nomad and uh, Gridlock are the only operators that specialize in flank denial. Other than those two, uh, you may be able to use a Claymore, but Nomad and Gridlock are the only ones whose actual utility and pr primary gadget specializes in being able to stop uh, the defenders from flanking. And out of Nomad and Gridlock, Nomad is by far the best in being able to stop flanks. However, Nomad's utility doesn't really stop there. In my opinion, and I'll explain this better on and how to use her in this way, but I think she is great for vertical play. Now, clearly Buck and Sledge are, you know, the kings when it comes to playing vertically. But later on, I'll show you how you can actually use her effectively and why she's one of the best for playing vertically. And lastly, other than that, she's mainly just a support op. She's there not to go in and, you know, frag out, get a bunch of kills, but she's there to support a team, whether it be through just setting up, you know, flank denials, uh, creating lines of sight vertically, or just being able to uh, put down flank drones along with their air drabs and being able to watch those and drone in her teammates. So Nomad isn't like an Ash or Zofia that you can expect to go in and just frag out. Does she have the potential? Of course. But she's more focused on being a support operator. And one aspect of Nomad that I almost forgot that is extremely important is that she can protect team from run outs. Very important aspect. So say you're trying to get open an outside wall into the objective like on say CCTV on Clubhouse. If you're trying to get through that wall you know someone could run out of the garage door or someone could run out of stock and throw an out yourself there and kill you easily so having an air jab on those doorways can protect you and protect your thermite and ensure that you get inside of the building or open up the wall or whatever it is you have to do another example could be on constantly if you're trying to get the garage door open putting an air jab on the yellow stair door or on the uh, co windows will protect you and before I get in and show you examples on how to use, you know, flank denial and vertical play and using her as a support up, uh, let's first really just touch on her kit. Uh, her kit, she has the uh, AK-74, 75, 74, and the ARX-200, I believe that's the name of it. Um, most people prefer the AK-74, I for one prefer the ARX. Uh, even though it only has 20 plus 1 rounds in the mag, I prefer it because it has a faster faster rate of fire. Whereas if you use the AK-74, it has a rate of fire of 650, but does have a magazine capacity of over 40 rounds. So both of these are great guns. It just really comes down to personal preference. Most people will tell you to play the AK-74, but you know, guns are subjective. They, they each have their pros and cons, and that's up for you to decide. So play with both of them, see what you like the best. Now, looking at her secondary gadget, she has flash bangs available to her and breaching charges and what's funny with with most operators you usually pick one secondary gadget and you'll usually just stay on that one secondary gadget but when looking at nomad and realizing that she's great for uh playing vertically as well as flank denial and being a support operator you you'll usually switch between those very often or at least i find myself doing that so if i know i'm gonna have to play vertically on a certain site I will obviously bring breaching charges but if i know that uh they may be in an upstairs objective and i can't really play vertically i will bring flashbangs because nothing is worse than having your air jabs and shooting your air jabs into sight only for them to get destroyed by an ads or a womai magnet 
So keeping those flashbangs there, you have three of them. So keeping those there to uh, throw them in beforehand just to burn out the ADS so they don't get your air jab is very important. So if you're not playing vertically, always bring flashbang, flashbangs. Now these are just the primary functions of the Nomad and the kit that she has available to her. Now we're gonna hop into game and I'll show you specific examples of how you can use you know, her to play as a flank denial, as a vertical player, and as a support op. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to use Nomad as a flank denier, which is her primary function. And using her as a flank denial or just using her in general, uh, it's something that can come easy to people who may be experienced, but if you're new, you know, setting up air jabs in specific locations can be difficult because it does require some map knowledge. So hopefully I'm able to make it a little uh, easier for you new players. So let's assume that the defenders are defending in Aviator and Games, which is probably the most popular site on this map, at least it is in ranked. And as an attacker, the most popular push to Aviator in Games is uh, to take control of Bedroom and Astro, then move into uh, Statue and Trophy and then go on to try to take control of 90 down here and hopefully open up this wall. That is the take that most attackers decide to take. You could do a study push, but uh, in my opinion, whenever I play with my, my friends, we usually just try to take a uh, master push because it's easier, especially if you have a nomad. So as a nomad, you need to be aware of places that the defenders would be able to sneak up behind you in the efforts to take control of 90. And when looking at uh, your goal and where you start from, the only places that they could come and uh, sneak up on you on would be from these stairs, if they run out of that doorway, and if they come up Astro Stairs. Now, so out of all those three, the one that I would be most worried about would be right here on Astro Stairs. So I'd go ahead and put an air jab right there because it'd be very, very easy for them to push up these stairs without us knowing, especially if we're all the way, you know, maybe in the trophy entrance or maybe already at 90. So if you're making a push on Villa from north to south towards Aviator and Games, always make sure to put one right there. It may not stop the defender. It, it, it should stop the defender in the tracks and they'll stop the flank because they know that everyone knows where they're at. But it's primarily there t as uh, just uh, audio cue to know that, hey, there's someone trying to flank you. So that's, that's a must if you're making this push. As for your second one, you could either put it on these stairs or put it right up there. And out of those two, I would prefer to put it up there. Even though you can, as a defender, you could get an angle to 90 from here. It's harder to place an air jab on these stairs because it doesn't matter where you put it. It'll be very easy for the defender to get rid of it. And so you could put it right there, but the defender could stay right here without getting triggered by it. Um, if you put it right there, they, I'll show you. They can just easily see it. First of all, they can hear it, so they know it's there. They can see it right there. And as they swing, they're still not in the radius. They can see it and take it out e very easily. The only people that won't say that are people who are just, oh, I forgot you can't pick it up, are people that are just brain dead or can't hear or are blind, or maybe they're just trying to rush at the last minute. But uh, typically, I wouldn't recommend putting one right there. I'd rather use it right there to stop this run out because if you're at 90 and they know you're at 90, they can run out, get you right there. And I'd be more worried about that. So what do you do about these stairs? Because you still, you know, need to have eyes on these stairs. Well, as a nomad, you can either decide to uh, watch the stairs. Or if you already have someone on your team that's dead, throw out a flank drone. Set up a flank drone right here and have the person whoever's dead watch it for you. And they can let you know if someone's trying to push up those stairs. So that's how I'd go about doing it. So... You've already used two air jabs. You used one on Astro Stairs, you used one on this door to stop the run out. And if you have somebody watching that drone, the only way they can push you without you knowing is if they have an Oryx and has the hatch opened in Master. Um, or, you know, that hatch open and you're somehow, you know, stupid enough to let an Oryx push you from that if you're at 90. So the only place they can really push you from is from uh, down Classical Hallway at the Southwest 90. So you can either watch that or go ahead and set up an air jab for it. Um, either of those options are fine, but me personally, a lot of people may not like this, but I like to save my air jab for the plant. 
So say it's a, a 2v2, 2v3, or whatever. We come in, and my Twitch comes and plants at this default spot behind the bar. As a um, nomad, I'm open from right there and right there, and there should be a rotate right there. These walls will be reinforced. So I can afford to put an air jab right there, not even have to worry about that because I can stay behind the bar and watch vault and the rotate. And I know that they can't push me through there because this should be reinforced. And so really it's, at that point, it's just about playing time. And so this can be something that's very, very confusing to especially a new player. It, it takes some map knowledge to learn the you know places where defenders can flank you from. But if you're not sure, just ask yourself, okay, what position what positions can i be pushed from what am i susceptible from what angles are people not holding and then put an air jab or flank drone on those areas so if i'm at 90 and i know that there's an air jab watching the aviator door there's an air jab on um astro stairs there's somebody watching that flank drone i know that the only place that i can get pushed from is this hallway so i should be holding an angle on this hallway or you know putting a uh, air jab maybe down maybe down there because it's, it's late in the round. I highly doubt they'll make a push up these stairs. Um, cause if they're going on a flank, they'll hit the, they'll hit the, uh, air jabs. So I may be putting right there to stop a study push or just be aware that they're trying to push from study and about to peek right here on this corner. So in the end, it's just all about eliminating the possibilities of areas that you can get flanked from. And being able to not worry about the flank will make every attacker a lot more comfortable and it will give you just the confidence to go in and do your thing without having a Jaeger or an Ella or a Vigil coming behind you and getting rid of you. And so that's pretty much the basics when it comes to using her as a flank denial. Um, so yeah, just always remember, be aware of the areas that you're susceptible from that you can be pushed from and just make sure to put an air jab there. And in most cases, that'll just be the staircases. In cases, they'll be staircases. But yeah, that's just an important thing to keep in mind. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you to Consulate and show you how you can use her as a vertical player. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to use Nomad as a vertical player. And clearly she isn't the best in that regard. Clearly that goes to either Buck or Sledge. But looking at her ability to protect flanks as well as her ability to bring breaching charges with her, she can be very, very good as a vertical player, especially for someone who solo queues, because if you solo queue, you can't really rely on the people that you've solo queued with to protect your flank or help you out or watch angles as you do your thing as a buck or a sledge. But with Nomad, you can protect your flank and you'll be aware if someone's trying to push you, so you'll never get snuck up on as you're in that vulnerable, vulnerable position while playing vertically. Also, if you're playing Nomad, try to uh, go with your Bucker Sledge and protect them as they do their thing and play vertically. But being a uh, Nomad, I'll just you have the tools available to you to safely play vertically. I said the word vertically a lot. I'm sorry. So, like Villa, let's set up a scenario where the defense is defending down here in Garage. So... You'd want your sledge, your buck, or yourself as a nomad to play vertically. So as a nomad, you need to ask yourself, how are you vulnerable? What areas would you be vulnerable from as you're trying to open up these floorboards? Okay, so some may say right there, and you'd be correct. A uh, defender could easily come through there and mow you down as you're trying to play vertically. So that's something that you would want to worry about. So I'd recommend putting an air jab there, as well as maybe putting out a flank drone, maybe right here so that whoever's dead can watch the stairs. We're putting it right here. It will probably get shot, but you can have somebody watch that and let you know. So an air jab and a flank drone right there. And a lot of you may think, especially new players may think, put one right there because they can't push you if it's right here. But you fail to realize that they can easily just swing on this desk, can I hit the air jab and kill you from back over here. So you need to also be able to cut off this entire room. So I recommend putting an air jab right there so the only way they can get to you without you knowing is if your teammate whoever's dead isn't watching your flank drone and they shoot you from the hallway and if they decide to push from the hallway the air jab is going to get you so you're pretty protected from that you're also very protected from that right there they can't even get into this room unless they have an oryx which even if they do have an oryx these hatches would already be uh reinforced so with having those air jabs and those and that flank drone set up, I can now play vertically. I can put my breaching charges down and 
do my thing. Hold this angle. Uh, maybe open it up over here. To watch whoever may come out of the rotate. Uh, putting it above right here so I can maybe get out the uh, bandit batteries, Kai claws, or whatever there is. And I'm doing all that and I have the sense of security to know that I am not going to get pushed from lobby because there's no way they're going to be able to come through lobby without getting hit. I'm kind of susceptible to that, but again, if I have a dead teammate in an air jab or, you know, if there's a sledge, which there already should be a sledge coming with you, you should be the one to hold that angle while the sledge plays vertically. And if they try to push, you will have an air jab right there. So again, she isn't the best when it comes to vertical play considering she only has three breaching charges. But you do have that sense of, sense of security if you're solo queuing and you can't really rely on your teammates. You can be the one to protect your own flank. So a lot of you may be thinking, does center this is obvious. But to new players, they don't really, you know, think in 3D the way that veteran R6 players do. They're not thinking about the vertical play as much as people who've played this game for a long time. And it takes a while to actually learn how to play vertically and get map. First of all, you need to have map knowledge to play vertically. And new players don't really have map knowledge. So you need to be able to, you know, be in a room and know what's directly above and below you. Because again, if you're a new player and you decide, hey, I'm just going to play vertically come in here, open up these floorboards and shoot from above. You're not probably not thinking about, hey, there can be a defender up there that can do the same to you. And so overall, the main rule of thumb you should have when playing Nomad or the things you need to be thinking about is one, you're not there to go in and drop a lot of kills. If you can do that, that's great. You could probably do that with her considering that she has, you know, great weapons, but you're not there to do that. You're a support player. You're there to protect the flank and watch drones and drone out for your teammates. Um, and so when, when you're playing, just think, Okay, always be thinking, what areas am I vulnerable from? What areas am I not watching? Can I afford to watch those areas? And if you can't afford to, you know, pay attention to a certain area of the map, that's where your air jabs come in. And so for, you know, R6 players who have been playing for a while and have a lot of map knowledge, uh, this will become easier to you, as I mentioned. But if you're a new player, just try to be aware. Try to soak up as much information as possible. Try to learn the maps. Try to, you know, find out where the staircases are because staircases are a safe bet to put your air jabs. And be thinking, when you're with your buck or sledge, whoever's playing vertically, what areas are you susceptible from? Put an air jab there or either watch it. And again, if you can't afford to watch it, that's where your air jabs come in and your flank drones. So that's about it for this video. I hope you learned something. I hope it wasn't too complicated. I hope it wasn't too simple. But I hope overall you did get something out of this, whether you're a beginner player or you're someone who's been playing for a while and you're just now looking to buy Nomad or start playing her. Or maybe you're someone who plays Nomad all the time and maybe you're just looking for something else. And hopefully I was able to provide that. So anyways, thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you can be notified every time I post a video. I'm the Senator, and as always, have a good one.